What's good everyone? I'm really excited about today's video, and as you're probably aware, there's a lot of hype around ChatGPT. Now everyone and their dog seems to be talking about it. How to use ChatGPT to make money. Use ChatGPT to do schoolwork. Use ChatGPT to do work work. ChatGPT is changing the game. There's a growing number of videos surrounding ChatGPT, and now it's time for your boy to make one too. <clears throat> yeah. All aboard this hype train, cause the next stop, well, there's no next stop. The hype train has no brakes. For those of you unfamiliar with ChatGPT, GPT-3, and OpenAI, here's the way I think of it. OpenAI is a company whose mission is to ensure that artificial intelligence benefits all humanity. Sounds like some iRobot stuff if you ask me. They created a powerful language model capable of generating text and code in a conversational sounding way, and they call this model GPT-3. Now there are other models and iterations like it out there, um, like for instance GPT-4, um, but that one isn't really accessible to everyone just yet, so I'm just going to talk about GPT-3. Now you can think of GPT-3 like an engine capable of doing work and chat GPT like uh, is basically like a car that houses that engine um, which allows people to drive it and like you know experience it now together users can engage chat GPT to answer trivia solve problems and really excitingly get contextual information based off of given data so what make GPT 3s features ideal for home assistant well, to be brutally honest, currently there's no need to use GPT-3 in Home Assistant, in my opinion. I just wanted to see if I could do it, that's all. So this is why we're here. Home Assistant is already very capable. Even if an integration or feature isn't available within Home Assistant, with enough spit and elbow grease, you could hack together some kind of solution. But this doesn't mean that there's no room for GPT-3. What I do find is that using this gives Home Assistant a more realistic, human-y feel. Additionally, GPT-3 also allows you to cut down on business logic for Home Assistant to arrive at an answer. Here's like a quick real world problem to explain what I mean. So I have the Akara button that activates a 30 second timer before setting the house alarm to away mode. Now, if a window is open or something is open in the house during that 30 second period, the system will complain that there's a problem, but after the 30 seconds. And to add insult to injury, right, we're not in the house after 30 seconds, we're in the car driving down the street, so we don't hear this error message. However, even without GPT-3, the issue is still pretty easy to fix. By grouping the sensors and updating the automation, Home Assistant will say upfront that there's a door or a window open before starting the timer. But what if I wanted to add a little finesse to it to get a little bit more specific? I need my automation to be so user-friendly, it'll take you to dinner and offer to pay. Please put away your wallet. Like, it needs to be that friendly. So to increase the user-friendliness of my automation, I need Home Assistant to say the actual names and areas of the that have the doors and windows open so my wife and I don't have to play Where's Waldo and find these, you know, these locations. Now, despite this additional caveat to the automation, I can still get this done without GPT. However, it would take some non-trivial logic to filter through all the valid sensors, and then I would need to create some kind of function to read out the names in some kind of conversational way, or, or hear me out now, I could just let GPT-3 do it. How? Remember. Now together, users can engage ChatGPT to answer trivia, solve problems, and really excitingly, get contextual information based off of given data. GPT can answer novel questions if you give it data that it can reference. And you can actually check this out on the website right now for yourself. On the Playground in OpenAI website, I gave the prompt a simple JSON structure that listed entities and states. And I asked it a question. And surprise, surprise, it was able to use the data to answer it. So what did I build using ChatGPT or GPT-3? Before I continue, if you like this content or find it entertaining, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe and maybe like the video. I have a goal of reaching 1000 subscribers and at the time of making this, I'm almost halfway there. So I really appreciate you guys taking time to watch my stuff. So even though I think that there's a lot to explore with GPT-3, I wanted to minimize the gimmickiness and ensure that it improves my automations instead of complicating it. And even if it complicates it, it needs to provide enough value to justify that additional complexity. Well, let's take my initial example where I use GPT-3 to enhance my alarm automation. 
Since GPT-3 is fantastic at interpreting data and giving a human-like response, I don't need any additional logic to filter through the data and craft the message to announce any open door or window. This is a scenario where GPT-3 simplifies my workflow and also gives it a personality with its conversational-like responses. None of the sensors are on. This is the most ideal scenario. However, I didn't make an overly complex change to incorporate GPT-3 in the hopes that it would benefit me more than it would annoy me. And this overcomplication came through me completely overhauling my Home Assistant chatbot code to include GPT-3 as a decision-making engine to solve problems. Let me go over this really quick just to give you an idea as to how GPT-3 is incorporated into Home Assistant. Um, this is my ingress point for Telegram within Home Assistant. It's also the ingress point for Siri or uh, my webhooks into Home Assistant as well. Um, this is at home, that webhook uh, integration point. Um, I'm not gonna go over that right now, but this is the one from Telegram. So whenever I send a message from Telegram, this is what it hears and picks up and then it starts. Um, so just to give you a high level idea, this used to be a lot simpler. I'll see if I can find an image or I'll post an image of what it looked like in its simplest form. Uh, sorry, I thought I saved the image, but I apparently I didn't. But it used to look as long as this. This is as long as what it looked like. Um, but now, as you see, it's gotten rather complex, but for good reason. Um, when we receive a message from Home Assistant, we have a lot of cool things happening behind the scenes. Uh, first, it takes the data, it normalizes it, so wherever the text is coming from, along with some other information, uh, it kind of puts it into an organized fashion, and then it checks to see if there's an intent or if there's an intent that was saved within the system. An intent simply meaning that the system was trying to do something. Uh, if there was an intent, then we have two different branches. Uh, one branch basically says that if there's an intent, just simply start the flow from where it last went off. If there's no intent, then we're gonna check to see if it's a command or a question. Uh, this is using a combination of Open API as well as NLP. At this point, we haven't done anything with Open API yet. We just simply are asking the NLP, look at this question and then tell me if, or look at this prompt and then tell me if it's a question or a command. If it, uh, and then from there, we're going to go and create a payload for Open API and then we're going to send it to Open API to interpret. Open API is going to basically tell us what the associated intent is or what the question ID is because certain questions within the system have specific IDs and certain intents have certain actions that's associated with it. So this is going to receive, let me actually click on it. So this is going to receive uh, uh, an object where it's going to interpret and it's going to return back, hey, this is the intent or the ID that you want based off of what was said. And then we'd go back and we refer to this question, whether or not it was a question or a command. If it's a question, then we know that we're going to basically uh, use, let me make sure. Yep. So if it is a question, we're going to check to see if there was any ID. If, if OpenAPI wasn't able to find an ID, then basically we're going to just go through and ask open api again hey we weren't able to find an id this is a question so here answer the question to the best of your ability um and then it basically returns it back to the uh, to telegram or the app that i'm using to type to it otherwise if there was an id then we simply go and grab the information based off of that id and then we send that information back to telegram otherwise if it wasn't a question and it was a command then we check to see if there was no intent if there's no intent then we tell um, the assist or what do they call it now the conversation API or the conversation integration that Home Assistant has internally, we simply ask that, hey, 
we're, we have a command, try to handle it. And it basically responds back with whatever the response is from that. Otherwise, if there is an intent, then that means we have a special custom command that we want to run and we simply pipe it through. We find any additional actions that comes with that intent and then we fire it off and we let the, our internal systems handle it rather complex. It seems overly complex, but what this actually enables us to do is to take in any question or command, look at it, basically determine whether or not if it's something that we can handle or can't handle. If we can handle it, then we simply route it to the appropriate sections that can. If we can't handle it, then we simply ask OpenAPI, hey, this is probably a question for you. Can you just give me some kind of answer back? And as a result, we're able to handle a multitude of situations. Okay, so here's an example utilizing the system that I just mentioned. Uh, here, this is the Telegram app, which is where my Home Assistant chatbot is created. Uh, we're gonna basically ask it to change the volume of the master volume and we're going to tell it to change it to 0.5 when we send it off it's going to ask us a confirmation back and then we're going to say change to 0.5 and then notice how it changes that fast uh, all of this is using the system that i just previously that i just previously showed by including GPT-3, I was able to simplify the code in some respects where I no longer need training data, but the overall logic did increase, as you see here, in complexity. I can create a separate video for deep diving into how this works later and how you can set up your own Home Assistant chatbot. Okay, so what are some areas for improvement? Knowing the GPT-3 model is capable of understanding code, I got curious to see if it's able to run code. Okay, so in this example, I'm basically giving ChatGPT a class called Ice Cream Shop where I'm, it can take in a single flavor. I also have one method that's gonna return a string that says, yum, my favorite ice cream, and then the flavor. And then I'm just gonna instantiate this new class, and then I'm gonna call this method. And it's supposed to say, yum, my favorite ice cream, vanilla. Let's see what it says. Yes, it is. It's able to run code. GPT-3 is so impressive, but is it useful? On the surface, it seems like GPT-3 is like MSG. Sprinkle it on everything and it just makes it better. But while working with it, I realized that GPT-3 excels at interpreting and summarizing data and even searching for answers, but all of these are analytical tasks. I found that GPT-3 helps you to learn about your home automations and devices, which is useful. But what would be more useful is if it could actually affect change. In contrast, Home Assistant Conversations Integration, or I think it's called like Home Assistant Assist, that's actually really good at making changes to your devices. You can tell it to turn off the light and it will turn off the light, but GPT-3 does not have that kind of access to your system. And and technically, even if it could, right, even if let's say GPT-3 could generate code that can dynamically execute um, on your home assistant platform, then as useful as that would be, would be an extreme security threat. Like you wouldn't want to do that, technically. I mean, like if you're adventurous, you could, up to you. And this is a small one, but the last thing is that I personally wish it was free. Uh, that's just me. Like at least, at least as a dev, right? I, like it's not expensive, but it's still digging into my pockets and I don't like people digging in my pockets. That's just me though. I mean, like maybe you like that, have people rummaging around, uh, just keep your hands on my pockets. But overall, I'm impressed. More and more people are incorporating GPT-3 into everything they do, so we'll see more creative uses and applications for this technology, and technically it will only get better. In the meantime, I know I'm not the only one exploring these options, so I would love to hear from you all and get your comments, ideas, triumphs, failures using GPT-3. In the future, I'm going to give you a more detailed account about how my Home Assistant chatbot works and how I use GPT-3 and NLP to enhance my user experience. Okay, bye.